while the laughter of joy is in full harmony with our deeper life, the laughter of amusement should be kept apart from it. The danger is too great of thus learning to look at solemn things in the spirit of mockery and to seek in them opportunities for exercising wit. So said Lewis Carroll. Intrigue, isn't it, that the idea of amusement be so different from that of joy? So, why do we have amusement parks rather than fun parks or joy parks? It's as if they're presenting a facade, and we shouldn't look too far beyond the surface at what's going on beneath. Well, my dear friends, it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink, and listen. It started with me watching TV. I was watching cartoons when the screen went to static. I got up from the sofa and tried resetting the cable box, but it didn't work. I tried turning the TV off and on again, but the remote wasn't working either. As I sat back on the sofa, accepting defeat in my battle against bad cable, the screen suddenly changed to all white. After a moment of me staring, a woman walked on screen and turned to face the camera, her hands holding one another and her elbows propped out, parallel to the bottom of the frame. She wore what looked to be an old-fashioned, bright red diner cap with a white lining. It matched her bright red dress that flowed down and outward. She wore bright red lipstick that matched the rest of her outfit, and her unusually blonde hair was braided and fell to her front left. Hello. This is a friendly reminder that sleep isn't necessary. Today, we at Daydreamers Amusement Park are happy to finally unveil our most prestigious pass to date. Starting this Saturday, the No Sleep Pass will become available. This is our long-awaited all-in-one pass. For $99.99, you get the Time Pass, which allows you to stay in the park from the minute it opens to the minute before opening the next day. The Ringleader Pass, which allows unlimited rides on all rides, including a fast lane pass to bypass those pesky long lines. Also, access to the No Sleep Pass exclusive Midnight Fright Tour. For the next two minutes, be one of the first seven callers and claim a free No Sleep Pass for use this Friday, a whole day before this pass is available to all. Call the number on your screen and start daydreaming today. I'd never been to an amusement park, but I'd always wanted to. So when the number popped up on screen, I didn't hesitate. I quickly pulled my cell phone out of my pocket and dialed the number on screen. It only rang once before an automated message thanked me for calling and informed me I was the fifth caller. It said for me to claim my no sleep package. I had to first speak my name into the phone. Lucas Wolf, I spoke into the phone. The voice then asked me to speak my address. Finally, it asked me to type in my age to make sure I was eligible. The message then went on to inform me that an automated text would be sent to my phone with the address of the park, along with the time I should arrive on Friday morning. I didn't care that I'd never heard of this park before. All I cared about was being able to finally go to an amusement park, and that I was getting to do it for free. Excited, I posted about my success online. Shortly afterwards, my friend Jamie replied. She had won the last free pass. After chatting about our excitement, we decided we would carpool. The rest of the week went by in the blink of an eye, as I waited with bated breath for Friday morning. On Friday morning, I woke up to my alarm at 2.30am. Jamie would be at my house for three, and then we would venture out on the five-hour ride to the park. Already feeling the excitement course through me, I jumped out of bed, threw on my clothes, and ran down to the kitchen to grab a snack before hitting the road. When Jamie pulled up, I was waiting for her at the edge of my driveway. I hopped in the car, gave her a hug hello, buckled up, and turned on the radio as we began to drive off. Right before the on-ramp to the highway, we stopped at a 24-hour coffee and bagel shop for breakfast. Jamie swung the car around the building so we could go through the drive through 
wasting as little time as possible getting back to the drive ahead. We ordered coffee and bagels and got back to the road. Once on the highway, we turned up the music and jammed out the whole ride there. As we pulled into the parking lot of the amusement park, we noticed the other winners of the free passes had already arrived. Other than us and them, no one else was parked in the parking lot. I thought that was strange. It was an amusement park after all. Jamie parked the car and we got out to wait with the others. After a few minutes of waiting, a woman dressed similarly to the one in the commercial approached the gate from within the park. She was smiling. Clearly excited that all seven of us had made it. Welcome to Daydreamer's Amusement Park, she began. I apologize if you've been waiting long. I was busy getting ready for the day. My name is Jess, and I will be your personal attendant today. Anything you require, I will do for you. And don't worry about food, drinks, or paying for any of the games. As a special thanks for being the first to no sleep pass holders, everything is complimentary for the duration of your stay. She seemed way too enthusiastic about her job. She opened the gates and let the seven of us in. First, she guided us over to the restrooms in case any of us needed to use it before adventuring through the park's seemingly endless number of attractions. As she led us to the first area of the park, Filled with small kiddie roller coasters and games, a thought occurred to me. She never checked to make sure we'd actually been the ones to win the free passes. I shrugged it off and assumed nothing of it. Just a strange little detail atop an endless pile of fun to be had. Eventually, I started to notice more and more people in the park. I suppose everyone thought it would be packed at opening hour, and waited a bit to come. After about an hour in the park, it was packed. Every ride, every game, every food stall and break area, all filled with countless numbers of people. Thankfully, our free passes came with the ability to bypass the lines, making us the priority over everyone else. Even as a young adult, I felt like a god. Younger me would have let this go to my head and rub it in at least one random person's face, but I didn't. I did, however, feel quite humble. When noon came around, Jess led the group to a food area reserved just for us. As we ate the free food being given to us, Jamie pointed out a man in a yellow shirt that was staring at us. He wasn't moving or even blinking. He just stared. Someone else in the group noticed the man and informed Jess. She looked over to the man and waved her hand as if shooing him away. Like it was an order from a general, he suddenly turned and walked off. <laughs> Jamie and I couldn't help but laugh at the man's unusual behaviour. As the day progressed, we continued riding the rides, eating snacks and chugging down sodas. By the time the park began to close for the other guests... All of us had pretty much had our fill of fun and games for the day. Jess noticed our fatigue and offered us the chance to have an hour break outside of the park to do what we wanted. Jamie and I decided to go back to the car for the duration of the break. I scrolled through social media with my feet up on the dashboard. Jamie decided to look up more about the park. She only managed to find the park's website page. The following is a brief history of the park from the website. The first Daydreamers Amusement Park, founded by R. L. Rogers, was constructed in 1987. Rogers was fond of his childhood memories of going to amusement parks. As he grew older, he wanted to build a park the likes of which were never seen before. In 1997, he came up with what is now famously the Midnight Fright Tour. A park transformed after hours into a complete horror show. He had every ride, game, and booth rebuilt so that during the night everything could be transformed into the perfect horror show. Sadly, in 2004, a fatal accident occurred during one of the fright tours and it had to be shut down permanently. 
The fright tours had become the biggest attraction to the park, and losing them had caused the park to be shut down within the same year. Talks about rebuilding the park have taken place, but nothing has come of it yet. Wait, Jamie began. Did they just forget to update the page, or did someone else buy the rights for the park's name? I don't know, I replied, curious myself. Uh, we should ask Jess when we head back in. Jamie bookmarked the webpage, and we returned to watching videos and going through our social media. When we re-entered the park, it was a little past ten. We regrouped with Jess and the others by the bathrooms we'd first stopped at when we arrived earlier in the morning. Two members of our group hadn't come back yet, Mr. Grovewood and Miss Lancy. We waited for them another ten minutes or so, before continuing on with our evening. With just five of us now, Jess led us across the park to a small building. We were going to be given a small video show of the various tours they do for the Midnight Fright Tour. As we entered the building, we were led through a small hallway and into a room off the end of the corridor. Upon entering the room, Jamie and I noticed that only five chairs had been set up in the room. We hadn't seen Jess inform anyone that the other two hadn't come back. Again, I thought it was unusual, but shrugged it off. Maybe I'd missed her call someone. Either way, I didn't care much. All I was thinking about was having the time of my life. As we took to our seats, Jess flicked a switch on the wall. A light came on from a projector on the ceiling. We watched the video being projected on the wall opposite the door. The video showed all the kinds of fright tours that they did. One was a type of manhunt. Another was something similar to your average haunted house. My favourite of all, though, was something they called Body Exit. This game consisted of starting in one of the rides, specifically the one that spins you and you stick to the wall. You would spin for maybe five minutes straight, come out, and then do a few shots, if you were old enough, which Jamie and I were, along with everyone else in the group. The goal was to become as disoriented as possible, then walk the now transformed horror theme park in an inebriated state. Of course, we would have a guide with us so that nothing would go horribly wrong. This particular tour ends with a member of the group being tagged, attacked by a killer clown hiding somewhere in the park. That guest would then be brought to a ride that was basically a giant water slide with a raft. This would be them exiting their body, or dying. It all sounded amazing. When the video concluded, Jess stood in front of us and asked which tour we would like to experience. The group was unanimous in selecting the body exit tour. She accepted our request, and asked that we wait here in the room for the next hour, so they could set up the park for this particular tour. The next hour, the whole group was in a state of anticipation of the fun and frights to be had. The time went by in the blink of an eye. When Jess re-entered the room an hour or so later, she asked us to follow her to the beginning of the tour. We made our way a short distance through the park to the ride they called Brain Masher. This was the ride where you spun and stuck to the walls. As we entered the cylinder of the ride, we hurried to take our spots along the wall. After Jess closed the door behind us, and we slowly began to spin, she took to the ride's announcement mic. This is a friendly reminder that sleep isn't necessary, she began. To truly feel the effect of this tour, we first need to get those brains a little mashed up. To do this, I will need to turn the ride speed up to its highest setting. Is everyone okay with that? The group gave cheerful woos and yes. Jess accepted our answer and thanked us for joining her this evening. As the ride began to spin faster and faster, I felt the centrifugal force on me become stronger and stronger. As it got even faster, it became almost impossible to keep the back of my head flat against the wall. 
I had to turn my head. My face now towards Jamie, who was a short distance away from me. We attempted smiling at one another, but all of a sudden, the ride hit a dead halt. We all went flying to our relative right. I slammed my head off the wall and hit the ground hard. After recovering and making it to my feet, I noticed everyone standing around one of the members of the group who was lying still on the floor. Upon closer inspection, I saw his head turned all the way around. He had hit the wall and broken his neck completely. He was dead. We began screaming for Jess to open the door and get help, but our cries were met with no reply. A few minutes of this, and the door finally opened. Jamie and I agreed that we would go find help. As we exited the ride, we were met with a thick fog that had completely enveloped the park. Trying to remember the way to the parking lot, we scrambled through the fog, looking desperately for anything we could remember as to get an idea of where we were. Nothing looked familiar to us. We spent a few minutes running around through the fog, finally spotting something yellow further ahead. As we walked closer, we realized it was the man who had been staring at us earlier in the day. It's you! I exclaimed. What the hell are you doing here? I have come to warn you. You have chosen, and chosen wrong. You're at the mercy of the park now. The man spoke in a monotone voice. What? What are you talking about? Someone just died. We need help. Jamie screamed at the man. It didn't matter, though. The man took a few steps backwards into the fog, vanishing from sight. I ran forward to grab him, but my outstretched hand grabbed at nothingness. He was gone. What the hell is going on here? Jamie shouted hysterically. She crouched down and began to weep. I bent down, wrapping my arms around her to comfort her. In the blink of an eye, what was meant to be a day of fun and fright had turned into true horror and death. When Jamie finally managed to calm down, we decided to find our way back to the group. We made our way through the fog, trying our best to remember which way we'd come from. Eventually, we found it. As we walked through the open door to the right, we were met by Jess, standing in the center of the cylindrical ride. The rest of our group lay motionless on the ground. Were they unconscious, or were they all dead? The thought sent a chill down my spine, causing the hair on the back of my neck to stand on end. Jess looked at us, her hands behind her back, and a smile stretching across her entire face. She took a few steps forward. As if the walls had just been shadows, other people emerged from the walls of the ride, all looking exactly like Jess in every way. They stood in equal distances apart from one another behind her. In unison, they spoke. This is a friendly reminder that sleep isn't necessary. The Jess that had been with us the whole day continued right after. The two of you are not fit to continue the tour. I kindly ask that you exit the park immediately. Jamie and I just stood there, motionless, in shock of everything that was transpiring before us. What was all of this? A nightmare? An extremely well choreographed prank? Or was something far more menacing happening? A moment of silence passed. Jess's face became angry. In a harsh tone, and much louder than before, she continued. Did you not hear me? 
You are not fit to continue the tour. You must leave the park at once. Another moment of silence passed. It was almost as if we couldn't move. We had become stone in our fleshy bodies. Jess took another step forward. Her face began to transform in front of our eyes. What had been a beautiful young woman was now a disfigured monstrosity. As if her neck had turned into rubber, her head extended from her body and stopped right in front of my face. If I'd had the ability to move, I could simply have leant forward an inch and be touching her nose with mine. She uttered one word in a demonic growl. Leave. Like we were on the end of a bungee cord, Jamie and I began flying backwards, swinging left and right through the park. As we flew through the front gates, they slammed closed. When we stopped, we were right in front of Jamie's car, still facing the park. We watched in awe as the fog grew thicker and higher as the fog began to cover even the tallest rides of the park. We watched as what looked to be a massive worm dived upwards out of the fog and then back down into it, and let out a loud, earth-shaking groan as it dove. Feeling like we were not in control of our bodies, or perhaps as some sort of instinct, we turned around and got in the car. As I sat down onto the comfortable leather seats of Jamie's car, I began to cry uncontrollably. Jamie did as well. After calming down from our hysterics, I smacked myself in the face a few times and looked back towards the park, trying to wake myself up as if this was all just a nightmare. I pulled out my phone and tried to call someone, but it had turned off and wouldn't turn back on. Jamie's phone was the same. The park, cloaked in fog, still sat in front of us. It was all too real. It had all actually happened. Jamie looked at me, then looked back towards the park. She turned the car engine on, and we drove off. Well, 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 another fantastic story there from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could share your stories with me so that I could read them for all of you. What did you think about that one? I really liked that one, thought it's a very novel take on the idea of amusement parks, and I had a lot of fun reading it. Comments below the video, please, and I promise I will do my very best to actually get around to reading and commenting back this time. Well, that's it for Monday. You know I'll be back on Wednesday, and I know you're going to join me again, aren't you? Yes, you are. Well, that's it for tonight. You all have sweet dreams, and join me again soon, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>